Jason Tatum's unselfishness to overlook the importance of a race for his first career MVP trophy and instead chase the team award that really matters being the Larry O'Brien trophy stems from the unselfish mentality from Boston as a whole that's going to be massive for them in April, May, and June. Boston's maintained night and day better health and continuity than any other team in the Eastern Conference, and with a stacked powerhouse, they're primed to go the distance to win their franchise's 18th World Championship. Film breakdown on the C's most recent dub, and how they're shaping up from a team perspective is coming up. Right before that, just 9.8% of my audience this month is subscribed, so if you haven't already, hit subscribe. In semi-transition, watch how White stunts to bait Dosumu into this entry pass before he shuffles over and times up his jump to pin Vucevic's dunk attempt to the backboard. It's kept alive by Vuce and eventually swung to DeRozan, where on the catch, Holiday stays right with a triple threat move, and right as DeRozan brings it down, swipes it away for the deflection. That's the best defensive backcourt on the planet, earning its keep. Again, we see White embracing and excelling at the challenge of guarding a player with 6 inches of height and 70 pounds of weight over him, as he holds off Vucevic from cleanly sealing, then has no hesitation in jumping right with Vuce on his post hook for the swat with his springy hops. After the bald Mamba block, we see another first quarter multi-effort highlight defensive sequence from Boston, as Porzingis challenges Phillips around the basket, while White lunges out on a 110 degree angle, timing up the layup and using his 6'8 wing span for a second block on one possession. Those defensive sequences allowed the Celtics to have the utmost comfortability to execute on the other side offensively. An empty side pin down from Porzingis on Dosumu frees up Brown to receive the Tatum entry. Brown draws the double from Vucevic, takes a dribble like he's about to pull up to draw even more gravity, and watch how he stops short while niftily elevating the release of his dime just over the 9 foot 4.5 standing reach of Vucevic for the lob pass to Zinger, which turns into a poster when DeRozan enters the picture. Jalen Brown's ability to manipulate defense is on the move by transitioning to the post where he can either beast at home with muscle or fade away with finesse, showcased why he's the best post scorer among all guards in the NBA this season. Out of the Chicago action, which is defined by the player who's receiving a screen then receiving a handoff, after putting Vucevic on a lonely island with seven dribbles, a moving jab steps followed by a smooth pull up in traffic. This time, it's Tatum isolating DeRozan by hitting him with a couple shifty jabs and letting it fly for the three-pointer. And as we see on a similar pull-up later on versus Dosumu, it's again the dicey, subtle triple threat that gives him the inch of room he needs to get into his release. Kobe White's gonna hold Tatum in check nicely on the block right here, but watch the footwork to jab backward, forward, left, right, then forward again before drifting back one-legged for the Dirk Nowitzki fader nasty. Speaking of such, followed by this cornet screen, with a top defender in the former bald mamba Alex Caruso clamping him up, an escape package is followed by a combo consisting of a double tween and hezzy dribble while planting his pickup foot, which is a moving jab right, before leveraging off that jab to swoop back laterally, making him up a ton of ground and creating significant space from Caruso for a fadeaway triple. MVP race superstar plays aside though, and the plays of the night came from hacker of the system Luke Cornett, who firstly during a Horford miss sheds Caruso under the basket before controlling the high velocity triple off the glass with his left hand for the ambidextrous finish. But the best part of it all is the vicious dabbing on his way back. Hell of a selly, but he wasn't done there, as this time off a D-White brick, a massive, even more impressive putback where a full extension of Luke's 7'6 wingspan allows him to throw down the two-handed Vanderbilt hammer. The vibe-enhancing Cornette is valuable in more ways than one, as Tatum would speak on Cornette's impact post-game against the Bulls, stating he's the ultimate teammate, ultimate professional, never knows exactly when his time is going to come or his minutes, but he's always prepared. He might be the funniest guy on our team. He keeps everybody's spirits high. Your number one option in Tatum caring more about his dab god more than his MVP chances is an outstanding sign for Boston's aura. But the MVP against the Chicago Bulls specifically was the dominant Derek White, as the Buffalo's 28 points led the Celtics in scoring, while his three blocked shots combined with Chris Dapp's Porzingis for six swats between the two of them alone. Most notably for D. White, he's been the Celtics' most timely player on both ends of the floor. White's played 83 clutch minutes this season, 
without committing a single turnover while being an NBA best plus 75 in clutch minutes. In the last five minutes of games within five points, Derrick's also posted 48 points on an insane 56-50-100 shooting split. From a coaching standpoint, while Heisenberg Joe Mazzula hates breaks, following eight days off, his team didn't miss a beat. So as worked up as he was about the rustiness, it seems the Celtics man in charge can put his worries to rest. Don't really like breaks. Don't really understand them. Because then you need a break coming from the break. It's like, what? Why'd you take the first break to begin with? We should play right now again. Yeah, Joe's a little crazy. Um, I thought the break was nice. You and I need to cook through to next Tuesday. Considering your boys a breaking bad stan, I've jokingly compared Missoula's wild yet effective demeanor to Walter White aka Heisenberg all season. However, in all seriousness, Joe's character arc is going to take a much better route than Walter White's. Because he and his coaching staff have constantly preached putting a team first mindset above individual priorities. The Celtics continuing to worry as little as possible about individual credit, but instead focusing on the winning edge and mentality they bring to the team that makes this winning system tick is what'll be the key to them beating four tough opponents four times each in the span of seven games this spring. The reason Missoula preaching a team mindset from day one and continuing to do so day in day out is so important is that when it comes to attempting to capture the ultimate glory in the National Basketball Association, what each key cog has to commit themselves to doing not just physically but spiritually as a collective 15 man roster plus coaching staff and organization isn't anything to take lightly by any stretch of the imagination. No matter how much talent you have, it's the sacrifice and continuity of said talent group that's the backbone to any given championship team. Despite Heisenberg being forced to take a week plus break from cooking, his team would ultimately build upon what's tied with the Dallas Mavericks for a current NBA longest seven game winning streak. You see the type of championship chemistry I was alluding to earlier show up with the pairing of Jalen Brown and first year Celtic Chris Stapps Porzingis. You saw it before with that lob out of the empty side pin down, but Brown's passing ability and poor Zingod's positioning, hands, and athleticism make the skill set of JB and KP an ideal match. The feel these two have for one another in the pick and roll allows them to seamlessly hook up for buckets. Chris Stapps is a really good screen setter, forcing bigs to help onto Jalen, and given Brown is too good of a pull-up jump shooter to leave open the slightest bit, this causes problems for defenses. In addition to strictly in the pick and roll, Brown and Porzingis have in general had a knack for finding each other in the half court, and combine that with the fact that they've become great friends off the court, and the JB-KP tandem has been utterly essential to the C's chemistry. In terms of the unselfish outline Missoula's established for the Celtics culture, this doesn't mean Joe isn't willing to uniquely praise the top talent he's equipped with coaching. Here was Missoula on Tatum's MVP chances. Do you feel like Jason should be more in the conversation for MVP? Yes. I mean, uh, I think, one, defining what most valuable means. Uh, it's not just about scoring. It's the ability to uh, have sustainable success, the ability to make people around you better, and the ability to be great. And so he's done it for a long time, and I think is underrated in that conversation. It's something that uh, he, I think he's doing a great job of reshaping what it means to be the best player. And, uh, you know, he does it every night, and he does it differently. And uh, you really got to watch the games and understand how he has an impact on himself and his teammates. And um, yeah, should be. Where does Tatum rank in the MVP race in your opinion? Best answer gets next video's comment or shout out. Today's shout out goes to Boston Holtain, who says, Honestly, the Bucks this year deserve a real docudrama. The Dame slumps, the coaching change, and the media continuing to remind us about Giannis's comments on winning and how he needs to play with others who want the same thing as him, among other points, would make a Netflix hit. Appreciate Boston and every other commenter. This was your boy D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.